Hey guys, what's up, man? And here's some of the top dental services I believe you should perform. Like these are the things that I would think that as a, as a dental practice owner, it's important to offer a wide range of dental services, like really to meet the demands of our patients. But the advantage of offering a variety of services that it can attract your new patients, that it gives them, you know, can retain the existing ones. Um, it can build a positive reputation on, on what you're doing in the community. You know, we've discussed, you know, it can kind of increase what you do, but including, you know, one of the things I, I want you always to make time for, and I always tell people, is really the emergency dental services, because it's really easy. I think that's the number one most important thing to make time for is the emergencies. Dental emergencies happen at any time, and it's unpredictable, right? And, and there's nothing worse than when you need to go to a doctor or something's going around where you just can't get in there. And it's the most stressful time and more painful. You have a, you know, you're a, you're, I'm a husband and a father, and, and I can't even imagine having a toothache and trying to function in life and trying to get through the day. And, and even if you're a mother or somebody's in a toothache, we've seen it over and over again, how painful and just debilitating pain can be, especially in dentistry. So there's no pain like tooth pain. We always talk about that, right? And, and, and we've seen it in our field, but offering same-day dental service or emergency service can be one of the most profitable things you can do. Like whether it's just treating a, a typical injury or a trauma or resulting in from a car accident or a fall or sports-related injuries, you can really catapult you to a whole new level. Whether you're just working on severe toothaches or a chipped tooth or whatever it is, there was a situation where it wasn't even my patient. Um, I'll tell you the story where... Uh, a little girl was uh, doing putt putt, and is uh, her mom and dad come to me? She's a, went to a pediatric dentist, but she went to putt putt, and a girl swung a putter and hit her and knocked out her front teeth. And literally, like, what would you do in that situation? I've been doing this two decades. I do ortho, I do implants, so I was well versed. I, I literally, her teeth are out of her mouth. Like most people, are like, oh my god, what do I do? I stop, drop, and roll. I drove to the putt putt place. I then literally put her teeth that thank God they had them in milk. I reinserted her teeth, reimplanted her teeth, put in some other stuff in there, PRP or PRF, and then and put to help aid the healing and then put brackets back on and got her. Anyway, make a long story short, I just seen her four weeks ago and she's she's totally fine. Her teeth are fine. Now look it, probably gonna be dead, might need rook canals down the down the road. Of course you're dead, but Either way, we saved it. And so that dental emergency that I was able to treat same day, even on a weekend and make time for it, that is huge for a practice builder. So always make time in your schedule to try to do same day dentistry. And if you can't or see emergency patients every single day, I promise you they're going to find somewhere else to go. So think of that. Secondly, cosmetic, whether it's teeth whitening, whether it's veneers bonding, whether it's orthodontics or moving teeth. These things, cosmetic, people want cosmetics. They want to be have a healthy smile. They want to have, you know, the snap-on smiles or changing their outcome in their life and offering services, whether you do it yourself or whether it's an orthodontist that you hire to come in or a, a specialist that, you know, a prosthodontist, whatever it is, um, make sure you can offer this within your practice. Nothing is worse than having to go to different places and, and different practices. You know, another thing is your family dental services, right? You got your dental checkups and providing just your normal maintenance and cleanings and, and stuff like that. Or you even have, like I was talked about before, just braces. You know, are you able to do braces? And if you're not, are you able to diagnose braces? Do you understand the orthodontics of teeth? Do you do Invisalign? Are you doing conventional? Do you understand how it works, even if you want to do partials or bridges or whatever it is to upright teeth? So understanding and having the basic knowledge of orthodontics or just family care and checkups is huge. And, and you know, obviously your bread and butter comes in at cosmetics and orthodontics and, and specialty services, but your dental checkups and cleanings, man, that repeat business over and over again. You know, they say somebody you need 750 uh, patients to fill one full-time hygienist. Well, one way to fill a full-time hygienist is to have more checkups and cleanings, right? And what I love about that is it, it gives you the leverage. You know, we have to do so many things in dentistry where we're always doing it. Well, our hygienist or people that are generating revenue for us can be one way to really increase the practice. Plus, people don't mind getting their teeth clean. You know, get creative with it, whether it's you're getting, uh, let, uh, make, make it a pampering service. Then you got your restorative dentistry, whether it's, you know, just regular fillings, whatever it is, crown and bridge, dental bridges. Um, you know, you have your basic services of general dentistry. I don't use a lot of um, amalgam, but you might want to use amalgam, whether it's your oral health care. Are you doing TMJ services? Are you focusing on occlusal guards? Like, what are you doing? You know, offering these services. How often can you do it? Do you do quadrant dentistry? Do you do one appointment dentistry? Like, how do you get creative in offering these services, right?
We know what bridges are for. We know what they're designed to do. But uh, what what do you do? Are you, are you putting the patient's needs first? Are you attracting their time? What are you doing? And then we talked about cosmetic and restorative dentistry. We talked about, you know, uh, fillings, crown and bridges, um, general dentistry services, preventing dental services, whether it's just oral hygiene instruction, nutrition counseling, your x-rays, your cleanings, you know, your teeth whitening services, take it home. You know, how do you get creative with your services? Are you doing advanced services, implant dentistry, same day dentistry? You know, are you getting people to say yes? What is it? Are you doing sedation dentistry? You know, are you educating your patients? That's really the care dental service I talk about. Are you having comfortable amenities? Are you creating things where they can become comfortable, whether it's a comfort menu? Because the number one reason, believe it or not, the second reason that people say no more than anything, trickly is, is, is from just anxiety. The number one reason probably would be, obviously, they'll always save money. But at the end of the day, I think if people value what you do, if they find value in what you're doing, then it's not so much a money issue. A lot of it is, though, is anxiety. You know, they get really, really scared. And the dental anxiety is another reason to do that. Another thing I will tell you when you talk about dental services or offering same-day treatment, offering same-day services or creating dental services that can be profitable to you, and if you can't do it, hire people that do whether it's especially whether it's oral surgeon, wisdom teeth removal, you got to hire oral surgeon or whether you don't want to play, do a lot of perio surgeries and you don't do it yourself. The more creative you get and the more services you can offer in one spot, the more profitable you'll be. I always say, why would you want to refer out when you can refer in? Why do you want to refer out when you can refer in? If you're not skilled enough to do all these services, find somebody who can and you pay them. Would you rather pay when, if you refer them out to an oral surgeon or a prosthodontist, or if you're referring them out, right? You're going to lose hundred percent of that revenue. How could I pay a specialist to come to my office? Or what would I pay them? Even if you pay them 50% of what they're doing and you buy all the supplies and you're only making 30% of profit on that, 50% is high. But if you're making 30% profit on that, it's still better than zero. And you're providing the service for your patient that they don't have to leave. So you got to direct check in with them. So the specialist, I always say, you want a specialist, make them work within, refer with within. Find somebody that can do what you can't do and refer with them. That'd be the number one growth profiting thing I could ever recommend you. Just because you can't do it doesn't mean you can't hire somebody that can do it. Remember that. So look at guys, these are some of the services that you can offer. Here's some things you can do in your practice to become more profitable. I hope this helps. We'll talk soon. Have a great day.